Hey, horror fans, welcome back to Room 237. And this is probably one of the more random reviews that uh, I've done in a while. But first, yeah, kind of a bleak look. Huh? I'm deep into the move now. I've got all my movies and posters are all gone. I'm just going to be doing videos when I can uh, in between. It's going to look messed up for a little bit. But a somber and bleak kind of <coughs> fits for this review. This is a movie that I had heard of. It came out last year, and I think it was kind of marketed as a horror film, or that's just how people took it. It's really not. It is it is more of a, I guess, artistic kind of way. Uh, it, it, it is like a revenge film. You know, people have compared it to John Wick, but uh, it's the 2021 Nicolas Cage film Pig. Now, yes, when this first came out, everyone thought it was a joke, you know, because you know Nicolas Cage, who's in like fifty-seven straight to Hulu movies every week, many of them are not very good. I mean, the last one I saw was uh, Willy's Wonderland, which it's not a good movie, but it was entertaining for what it was. Uh, I. Th I think this is kind of like Parasite, where like people hear the premise, they look at the trailer, they look at the poster, they think it's a horror film, and I thought it was. Uh, I thought I heard about this new Nick Cage horror film called Pig, and I saw the trailer, I thought it kind of looked like an A24 type film, which, you know... I will be doing more A24 films. I, I really like that company. Not all of them. I have a set list of ones I want to get to. And it does feel like an A24 film. It's kind of shot like one. It it does have that low budget feel, but with a really you know, well executed, very, very well made movie. And I think this was made on a very low budget. Doesn't say gross three point eight million, but it was directed by Michael Sarnowski, who also wrote it with Vanessa Block, who she also produced it along with Nick Cage and a bunch of other people. It stars Nick Cage and Alex Wolf from Hereditary. Uh, he was Durf in uh, My Friend Dahmer. Uh, Adam Arkin and Gretchen Corbet or Corbett however she pronounces it and uh, I was tricked I thought Jeffrey Dean Morgan was this one character and it sounds just like him I was like has he aged that much already and yes Nicolas Cage who looks like Nick Nolte in this film looks like this, this mountain man long hair beard his truffle foraging pig is stolen from him and he wants to get it back and yeah, the trailer and the marketing did kind of make it look like a revenge horror film. But this it's kind of a weird movie to talk about because, yes, he is very upset. And he is trying to get his pig back. But the way it goes about this is very different. This isn't driven on vengeance or justice or violence or anything like that. It's more of like... Uh, meditation that deals with loss, grief, uh, I, I guess empathy in a way. It, it is more of just <clears throat> because this movie really likes to subvert your expectations. Uh, there are several very, very effective th scenes in this film where the tension is just growing. It gets so tense. and you, Just going by this formula of, you know, someone out for revenge, you, you think something's going to happen. You think something's going to blow up or something's going to, and it doesn't. That's the biggest spoiler I'll get into before I get spoilers because I don't want to spoil this. Uh, so, I mean, take take another Nick Cage movie that I like uh, 
uh, Mandy, which is another uh, revenge film, but that one is violent. <laughs> this one is more just questions and conversations and kind of forgiveness. But Nick Cage really is this guy who had everything, lost everything, or left everything. All he has in the world now is this pig. He... Uh, I. This is a good movie to go into blind. It, it has such a stripped down... Everything about this movie is very stripped. It's very limited. Except for how effective it is. And that's one of the biggest compliments you can give a film like this. I mean, very limited cast. Very limited plot. Very thin on plot. Uh, and, but what it does with it is very effective. And, uh, I'm actually stumbling over my own words because I'm trying to think of how to properly... <laughs> This is a very good movie. I mean, this has a 97 on Rotten Tomatoes. Everyone seems to love it. T kind of taking everyone by surprise. The trailer thought it was like a, 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 a Nicolas Cage meme becoming a movie. In a way, I kind of thought that too. But this has got to be the best performance of his that I've ever seen. I've never been the biggest Cage fan. I mean, I grew up watching... Uh, raising Arizona with my dad when I was a kid. Other than that, I mean, mom and dad was fun. Mandy is really good. But, you know, he barely speaks in that film. W Willie's Wonderland is fun for how stupid it is. He doesn't say a word in that. And you can actually make some co some uh, contrast with his performance in Willie's Wonderland because in that, he doesn't speak but he's still Cage. He's still got the over-the-top, crazy, obnoxious kind of mannerisms. You can tell it's Nicolas Cage. Whereas here, he completely disappears. There's like no real, maybe one or two moments where he has like an outburst. But other than that, not really. And he does some wonderful acting in this. Like, there's moments where he breaks down and you really feel the weight of his performance in the situation. It almost feels like parody. That's something I, else I was thinking of when I started watching it. I was like, is this parodying kind of revenge films or these sort of really artistic uh, a meditation type films? It even has like the Tarantino chapters, you know, chapter one or part one. And it'll have a title, which is, you know, a fancy dish. Just one spoiler, you find out he was this top-of-the-world chef in the Portland, Oregon-based area. And at some point, he left 15 years ago and now lives totally recluse mountain man. Who has a truffle foraging pig and he sells the truffles to Alex Wolf who's a young, not very experienced uh, guy that sells uh, exotic ingredients to high-end restaurants. Then his pig gets stolen, Wolf helps him try to find him. That's pretty much the plot. <clears throat> but, uh, yeah. so I was wondering if it was like a parody because, you know, even with like those titles of the chapters, I was like, is it trying to make fun of these kind of pretentious movies? But no, it, it feels totally... There are some parts that feel intentionally silly. Kind of like the dialogue. You'll have this super tense, well-acted sort of dialogue scene. And it'll be punctuated by a really dry kind of Nick Cage sentence that, that just throws everything off and kind of hits you and... It is funny. But it is a very bleak, somber film. It is... Uh, there's not really a whole lot I can say about it other than just how good it is. Uh, I haven't seen a movie like this in a while where... You know, it, <clears throat> everything about it is just so, again, limited, but the movie's so 
fucking powerful. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, I, I'm going to have to go into spoilers early because the best way to go into this is totally blind. But Cage is excellent in it. And I don't know if this is one of the main themes of the film, but uh, we don't have a lot to be thankful for. Or we don't have, there's not a lot in life that we love. But sometimes there is something, even if it's one thing. And, you know, how much that thing matters. There, there are some conversations about, you know, if like a, uh, a tidal wave comes in, wipes out the city, and, you know, Cage talks about how people in the restaurant aren't real. Restaurant critics aren't real because they don't know you personally. Just these sort of uh, uh, introspective kind of... That sounds very bleak. Uh, almost nihilistic. But, uh, you know... And I think forgiveness is also kind of one of the themes. Or not really themes, but... The way it goes about its uh, revenge plot, there's no violence. It is more just about you know almost killing them with kindness, kind of approach, which I thought was very interesting, especially with this very somber tone. Music as well, very well used. Um, yeah, I guess I'll have to get to spoilers, but this is a very good movie. I probably should have watched this more than once just to really digest the feelings first. I literally just turned the TV off from watching this, so I don't think everything's really settled yet. But you know, there's just, a, there was a number of scenes where I'm, just, I'm watching it and I, I can feel the tension rise in the room and it still subverts what you're expecting. I did not see the ending coming. Uh, it is a gut punch of a movie. I think some of the posters say like brutal and I think one of the words used in the quotes is brutal. Probably meaning just how brutally effective it is, but I'm pretty sure if people that took horror movie away from the trailer and the marketing, they'll probably think this is another like, oh, Savage was another one, I think. They might be disappointed if that's what they're expecting, but <clears throat> uh, it's on Hulu. Uh, and if you think Cage is a walking meme, check this movie out because he is amazing in it. He doesn't have a whole lot of lines. There are long stretches where he doesn't speak, but he has this presence that is just you know, very powerful in this. <clears throat> uh, Alex Wolf was also very good. And this is a lot of moments in this that's just really sad. It just keeps, it gets more and more depressing as you go on, but it's kind of hard to read what Cage's character, like, <clears throat> it's like, it's almost like he always bounces back, yet he's always staying out in the woods. I don't know what I mean by that, but <clears throat> I'm going to get into spoilers, but yeah, it, this deserves its uh, 97 on Rotten Tomatoes because the performances, the the way it's shot especially, and just, it literally feels like, <clears throat> it's one of those movies where it's accomplishing so much with so little, and I love movies like that. Uh, <clears throat> maybe I'll have to do a re-review of this at some point, but... Uh, I'm going to be losing Wi-Fi for a little bit here, just in between the moves. So <laughs> I wanted to watch some, I, I wanted to see it before I, I lost it. <clears throat> I lost, lost it, excuse me. So spoilers for Pig now, but I loved it. So the general gist of how he goes this journey for how he finds his pig I mean, first he goes to this one associate named Edgar, and you know he's got his friend with him, or his friend. He's got uh, uh, what what the hell was his name? Amir, who's 
uh, Alex Wolf, the guy that buys the truffles from him. They end up at like this fight club <laughs> type thing where these homeless drug addicts will get the piss beaten out of them by uh, restaurant workers, which is a great idea, by the way. I've worked fast food. I would have loved to have that. <clears throat> and however long they last, that's how much money they get. And Cage plays this guy, Robin Feld, who I guess was like Gordon Ramsay in this area. People hear it and the world just stops. And so he goes like a full 60 seconds or whatever, just getting the piss beat out of him. And he's told his pig was given away to someone in Portland. And basically it's him. And he, he has to use his sort of name and reputation because he's kind of almost like he's fallen off the face of the earth. And even a couple characters who know him say like, you know, you don't exist anymore. Your name doesn't mean shit anymore. Even though it does because he does get a lot of help throughout the film. And you do have these great scenes between him and Wolf where, <clears throat> you know, just talking about things in life, like Wolf talks about how, you know, his dad's a, a typical businessman, he's always busy, his parents would go on date nights, but they always came back arguing and mad, except for this one night where they came home and they, they were laughing, smiling, talking about this wonderful dinner they had. And it was at this restaurant that Cage worked at. <clears throat> but then Cage asked what happened you know, to his parents. And Wolf tells him that his mother committed suicide. And Cage looks really distraught by this. Even earlier in the film, he puts a cassette tape in his boombox and plays it. And it's like a woman about to say, oh, I'm going to surprise you. And get ex-wife or something. He can't listen to it. I was starting to think, like, did he know his mother at, at some point? It doesn't go that direction. It's not, it's not that stupid. It's not that sort of Hollywood. But you do find out that he, actually I'll save that for the end. They go to this one other restaurant where someone else, the owner of that, was actually a prep cook for Cage uh, back when he was a chef. And Cage pretty much tells him, like, you know, I think he was getting at, you're not really in it for the passion or the food or anything. You're just doing what's popular and people don't give a shit about you. And that whole scene, the whole lunch scene, with the owner sitting at the table. It reminded me of the tavern scene on the Glorious Bastards. Just because uh, you can see the look on Cage's face. Like he's letting this guy talk. He just wants to know where his pig is. And the guy is just, looks, he's trying to keep that customer service smile. Just, <laughs> you can tell he's breaking down. And Cage breaks him down. Like just about how insignificant he is. Loved that scene. That was one where I was expecting something big to like explode or happen. It doesn't, but it's still very effective. <clears throat> then he tells him who has the pig, and it's Amir's father. Because it came up in conversation somehow. And this is a bit of a cagey scene where Cage gets pissed, starts hitting the uh, Amir's Camaro, and he yells gets his father's address and then he goes up on this porch and grabs a bike there's a kid coming he just ah that that was a funny cage moment goes all the way to amir's father's house tries talking to him while at the same time we find out amir's mother is actually still alive he's she's in a hospital or like a nursing home she's comatose Comatose, catatonic, it doesn't get into it. I'm glad it didn't because another thing about this movie is we know just enough. It doesn't spoon feed all these details into us like movies do. I know people say, well, we should get a sequel so we know why he left. And, you know, a, a, a prequel to see what he was like as the chef before the pig. 
why? It doesn't really say what exactly Amir's mother did to end up like this. But he's, he's talking to the door saying like, uh, I met the guy that made you that wonderful dinner that you talked about for years. Then the nurse goes in. That's when we find out that she's like comatose. He doesn't go in to see her. But he does say like, I can't believe dad would just let you die. So kind of hinting that maybe he's the only one that does care about her, but he can't even bring himself to go in and visit. <clears throat> so Cage is talking to Amir's father, who I, I did for a second think it, it was Jeffrey Dean Morgan, but it's not. And he pretty much threatens him to never, he, he offers him 10, 15, $25,000. Uh, and he keeps saying no. <clears throat> but then fi finally, and he, he completely belittles Amir the whole time, even though Amir's not there. And he tells him, you know, I'll send you 25000 You ever come back to my house, I'll chop the pig up in a bacon. goes outside Amir is there offers him a ride and this is where I, I think it gets very interesting because normally this would be the climax where they have the big battle the big revenge here his revenge is he sends Amir off with like a grocery list of things to get very special items that he has to say you know uh, Robin Feld sent me and he'll get whatever it is <clears throat> you know, he gets a, a very special bottle of wine from this uh, mausoleum that belonged to Cage, and we find out his wife's name was Lori, but she's dead. That that was the woman that was on the cassette tape. Uh, <clears throat> Cage goes to his former baker to get a a baguette, and when they have everything. They regroup at Amir's father's house. They prepare this meal. They bring him out. And it was the same meal that Cage prepared for Amir's parents years ago when they went on date night. And they had that wonderful dinner that they talked about for years and made them happy. Amir's father takes like one bite, immediately breaks down, brings back all the memories. And Cage is using that act of kindness to try to get him to give him his pig back. And then this is the gut punch where, you know, he was a big, bad, tough guy before, but now he's sympathetic and he says, you know, by the time the pig got to me, she was already being handled by these careless and neglectful junkies. They were too rough and they killed her. And the... The acting that Cage does, I mean, it goes, no audio, silent, he just collapses, and you really feel, you, <laughs> excellent performance. Like I said, I've never been much of a Cage fan, but that was a moving scene. <clears throat> um, so then they leave, uh, Amir takes Rob to a diner, and then Cage seems fine. You know, he agrees because he admits to Amir that he doesn't need the pig to find truffles. He knows how to use the trees to find them. And that, <clears throat> and when Amir says, well, why are we doing all this? He says, because I love her. The pig is all he has. The pig's all, all he has in the world. That's, and he wants to get her back. So then he, <clears throat> Cage walks home back to his cabin puts the cassette in and it was his late wife Lori singing a cover of a Springsteen song then it goes to credits yeah it, it's a very it, it's very unique <clears throat> to see this sort of uh, kidnap revenge film that looks tailor made for parody 
and then just have it be the opposite, like your revenge is kindness. That's almost a perfect recipe for parody, but it is so powerful. It's so well made, so well acted, that <clears throat> it, it is one of the best movies I've seen of the 2020s so far, especially outside horror. <clears throat> one of the best I've seen. And it deserves all the hype. I thought it was very effective. I loved the way it was shot. It does look and feel like an A24 film. <clears throat> I think it was put out by Pulse Pictures or something. <clears throat> yeah, sorry this wasn't as in-depth, uh, neon films, as in-depth or insightful as some of my other reviews. Just, the only thing I can really say without having to digest everything as of now is this movie's very effective. And, <clears throat> you know, it sort of does have that John Wick catalyst of, you know, pet slash loved one is taken. Only it's not this popcorn action film. It's more of just what we see what loss can do to people. And, you know, when the last thing in the world you have is taken, uh, how do you get it back? And I got to say, it was a ballsy move to kill off the pig. Have Cage go through all that, have that, you know, the most effective revenge plot ever do the nicest thing possible for someone which is make that excellent dinner that him and his wife loved and <clears throat> then say oh yeah your pig died he, he doesn't get his pig back it's a very somber uh, a melancholic film but very well made I was very impressed by it and I would love to pick it up so yeah, that is 2021's Pig with Nicolas Cage, which he was very good and the movie was very good. So hope you enjoyed this review and uh, thank you for watching.